Hi, I'm Glenn. And I'm Mark. And welcome to another episode of Masonic Unity, The Right Stuff. We are here at the Museum of Masonic Culture at 100 Barrick Street in Trenton, New Jersey at the Grand Lodge of New Jersey building. We are on which floor, Mark? The second floor the second in the floor. rainbow corner. And we are joined today by Sister Karen Vischer, who is going to talk to us about the Rainbow Girls. Yes, rainbow Girls? I'm a big fan. Take it away, Karen. <laughs> okay, how, how, do, how do I start after that? The International Order of the Rainbow for Girls is an organization for girls between the ages of 11 and 20. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Rainbow has, this is it's celebrating its 100th birthday this year. Oh wow. Yes, Rainbow Girls Happy was birthday. yes, was started in 1922 in McAllister, Oklahoma. It was a wonderful organization um, based on teachings about uh, certain certain topics including love, religion, nature, immortality, fidelity, patriotism and service. Hmm. All right. Okay. So I see uh, a lot of colors related to Rainbow, especially we see some colors in the back of us. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Absolutely. Rainbow is based on seven different lessons which are symbolized by the seven colors of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. We can see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And these colors uh, represent love, will represent love. Red will, red, will, red will represent love, excuse me. Orange is religion, yellow is nature, green is immortality, blue is fidelity, Indigo is patriotism, and you can't see it, but violet represents service. And these are all lessons which are taught to a girl when she is initiated into rainbow. Using the symbolism behind the different colors of the absolutely, rainbow. Absolutely, absolutely. We as Masons are big on symbolism, if nothing else. And metaphors. And metaphors. <laughs> so uh, you said it started in Oklahoma? Yes, actually, uh, in, in McAllister, Oklahoma, uh, based on um, uh, lessons written by um, W. Mark Sexton, who was a famous Mason of that time, and um, a woman from New Jersey, I believe she must have been an Eastern star, her name was Frances C. Black, learned about Rainbow and decided that seems like a nice organization for us to have in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So in 1923, the first assembly of Rainbow Girls was started in Newark, New Jersey, and I believe there were 175 girls in that First uh, class. That's yes. pretty impressive. Good class. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. From that time, different assemblies began to open up from the top of the state to the bottom of the state, mm -hmm. all teaching these lessons mm -hmm. and uh, having fun and learning some things and teaching girls important life lessons as well. Okay, and how many assemblies are there in, in the state? Currently, there are eight assemblies mm -hmm. um, which um, go from the top of the state to the bottom of the state. Okay, and, and what would a girl do at, at a rainbow meeting? Well, a rainbow meeting is very similar to any other type of meeting. There is ritual involved. There is um, things like taking the minutes, reading the minutes, talking about different charity projects, service projects, um, doing initiatory work, um, all other reports that are given in typical other meetings, uh, the closing of the meeting, and of course afterwards there's always time for some good food and fun. So it, it seems like um, Rainbow really teaches not only the lessons of the, of, the, of the Rainbow, but also leadership for the girls to really excel in not only their meetings, but in the community. Is that correct? Absolutely. And one of the themes of Rainbow is that Rainbow gets girls ready for life. And nice. Nice. I am a majority Rainbow, which means I was a Rainbow girl. I belonged to Betsy Schuyler Assembly Number no. 48 in Morristown. And one of my great memories of Rainbow, and if anything, actually, is learning how to uh, address and lead large groups of people. I can remember when I was the head of my Rainbow Assembly, the head of the assembly is called the Worthy Advisor, mm -hmm. and I was able to, to lead a state meeting where there were thousands of people there, and I got to open the meeting and address all these people. So that was a, a wonderful opportunity and a wonderful memory. Helped you grow as a person and help out the community and, and work out through that for your absolutely. service. Yeah. And, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yes. Now I can remember growing up as a, a young boy, uh, significantly less hair back then, everything kind of shifted more down. Hair. Well, actually yes, more hair, everything shifted. But uh, I was the mascot of Betsy Schuyler. So I would uh, be downstairs while you had your meetings, and the, the one thing I do remember is the food. 
Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And fun? And fun. Oh, good. And fun. That's <laughs> important, too. Uh, I see we have some bling here. Yep. And as we've discussed in other presentations, Masons love bling. That's right, absolutely. So I see this purple, I like that, that looks sharp. Yes, purple. this is actually, as I mentioned, each assembly has various officers which take place, which, which participate in the ritual of mm -hmm. the assembly. Mm -hmm. Now this particular one, this is an officer's jewel and this is for the Sister of Service, one of the Bow Sisters mm -hmm. who represent the purple, the, the violet color of service. Mm -hmm. And they would wear this during the meeting to symbolize what their office was. Oh, nice. So every different assembly would have someone wearing that purple... Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Okay, good. And we have a complete set of officer's jewels here to, to, to uh, symbolize all of those yeah, positions. I see Michaela Register and Allison Gwynn. I know those. They're out of Trent Assembly, where my daughter came out of. Actually, what you're looking at are not the officer's jewels, but you're looking at a series of pins. Oh, wow. Okay. And at every... As I mentioned, every assembly has a worthy advisor who, who mm -hmm. runs and plans the meetings. Mm -hmm. But there are a st set of state officers as well who um, are chosen from the different assemblies. Uh, and it's on, on, on a yearly appointment. And, every, and, and the one who heads all of the grand officers for the state is the grand worthy advisor. And actually, she gets to wear this wonderful crown, which is very sparkly, mm -hmm. on her head wherever okay. she's going. And each grand worthy advisor has a pin to symbolize what's going on in her, her year, her mm -hmm. theme. And we have a collection of these nice. pins that I believe they only started doing the pins maybe 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So okay. we have all of these pins which symbolize the years of these different Excellent. Grand Excellent. advisors. Now I also see something here. This is a, a set of, of bars in a, in a metal uh, with a, a, looks like a, Kind of a pot of something at the bottom. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Absolutely. These are some merit bars which can be earned by different activities. You get points for, for, for participating in different activities, mm -hmm. for traveling, for holding offices, mm -hmm. and community service. Community service as well. Excellent. Absolutely. And you win all these points and then you 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 can accumulate merit bars. And what's kind of fun is is if you go to a rainbow assembly, you'll see all the girls wearing a long ribbon attached to their dresses. That's mm -hmm. called a brag rag. Ah, brag rag. Yes, nice. and your 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 uh, um, merit bars are attached to that brag rag as as well as pins, which symbolize, which represent all of the offices you may have held in your assembly. Okay, oh. and I see at the bottom there's there's some kind of a pot. Absolutely, that is the pot of gold. Ah. Now, in Rainbow Ritual, we have a symbol of the pot of gold right here. Yeah, uh, oh. uh, no. Ah, they're messing with me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> Contained in the pot of gold are lessons, are, are, are symbols which are taught to the girls upon in, during their initiation, and those are secret lessons. So that's like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Absolutely, absolutely. And you can't look in there. You can't look in no, there. No, no chocolate, no, no chocolate. potato chips. No potato chips. I heard food and fun. That's after Maybe the meeting. Ah, after, after the meeting. Meet. Good. Well, that's why Rainbow Girls is so important for what so, they do to the community and all. So after a uh, a girl goes through Rainbow, mm -hmm. and what's the what's the she can the, the age get her majority at age 20 at age 20 so what happens after age 20 Can, are they completely done with rainbow or what, no, what goes no, on no you can still be involved with your local assembly you can help out the assembly um you can um aid have guidance for the girls mm -hmm. uh, after a couple of years you might be able to join the um, uh, advisory board mm -hmm. uh, for the assembly and help just help out from the other side of things excellent but hearing about all this excitement the food the fun and everything what if my daughter isn't yet 11 to be able to join? Well, we do have a group of pledges. Pledges, okay. Pledges okay. Are for, go from age 5 to 10. Okay. And they, um, they have meetings as well, not quite as, as structured as the Rainbow Girls, but mm -hmm. they learn about, rich, they do have their own ritual. Okay. They have fun. They, they like to participate in activities with the assemblies. Uh, with, the, with, with the big girls, okay, and um, it's 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 a lot of it's a good growing experience. Okay, and are there are there rainbow assemblies outside of New Jersey, or is it just in New Jersey? Absolutely. Okay. Now um, there are rainbow assemblies 
all across the country. Mm -hmm. um, they're in 47 states. Mm -hmm. uh, around the world, there are rainbow assemblies. One fun the fact. National order of rainbow. There you go. Yes, yes. You're, you're, you're smart. Yeah, I'm doing good today. Yeah. <laughs> One fun fact is that when, when rainbow uh, was established in New Jersey, New Jersey was the first state west east of the Mississippi that had rainbow girls. Oh, and New cool. Jersey helped to establish rainbow in Delaware, I believe it was, no, Maryland, Delaware, and New York. Okay, okay, interesting. So, um, actually, no. Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New York, because there are no Delaware uh, assemblies in Delaware. Oh, okay, interesting. So, say uh, a girl wants to become involved in Rainbow. Mm -hmm. How do they do it? Well, probably they can contact their local lodge, and they would uh, direct them to um, to uh, um, our, our Rainbow uh, Rainbow leaders, mm -hmm. and we can advise them as to which assembly might be closest to them. Okay, excellent, excellent. Great way to become part of the Masonic family and exactly. help out your local community. Exactly. Absolutely. Now Absolutely. The, the Grand Lodge of New Jersey, and really all Grand Lodges, um, are strong supporters of the Masonic youth groups, of Dean Leg, Rainbow Girls, of Job's Daughters, which is not in New Jersey, but in, in some other states. But they are our future. So uh, we as a Grand Lodge are very supportive and do what we can to help these organizations survive and to thrive. So if you uh, are involved in uh, masonry and in, in uh, Rainbow or Demon Light, please continue to help out and continue to support. And before we end, it's important to know that there's two things that we do ask of you. One, hit the like button. It makes us feel really good. It does. And two, subscribe so you can see more of our presentations, our interviews, our building walkthroughs. There's so much. It's a... All right, time to bring it back down. There's more coming. So thanks for being with us. Come on down to the museum and see more of our exhibits and more of our experiences here. So thanks for being with us. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.